Today, Bitcoin outperforms Ether as it surges back above 22K. Starbucks is launching an NFT rewards program on the Polygon blockchain. And Rusan Boykin of Hashflow breaks down the latest moves by the SEC to regulate cryptocurrencies. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Kate Rooney. The crypto market is starting the week mixed with Bitcoin rising back above $22,000 by noon Eastern while Ether fell to $1,700. Polygon's Matic token also getting a small boost today up to 91 cents. We'll talk more about why in just a second. Investors have a lot to watch this week. There's new inflation data out tomorrow that should tell us if inflation has finally peaked here in the US. There's also the US dollar itself, which has weakened in recent days, a good sign for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And of course, there's the Ethereum merge that's slated to finish by Thursday. Everyone is waiting for Ethereum's transition to proof of stake and we'll have much more on that merge throughout the week. Okay, let's talk about the top stories and we'll start with what's driving some of those gains for Polygon. Starbucks just announced its plans to launch NFTs for customers and will use the Polygon blockchain network. Starbucks Odyssey, as the program's being called, is a Web3 rewards program for customers. They can buy digital collectibles and in turn, the tokens will allow access to new benefits and experiences. Starbucks says the goal is to connect its customers to each other in the digital world. There's no launch date yet, but Starbucks is letting those who are interested in the program join a waitlist. Next, MicroStrategy is gearing up to buy even more Bitcoin. In a new filing with the SEC, the company said it plans to sell as much as half a billion dollars in stock to fund another round of Bitcoin purchases. MicroStrategy has been a major corporate backer of the cryptocurrency, thanks to founder and Bitcoin bull Michael Saylor. He recently stepped down as CEO of the company in order to focus his efforts on buying more Bitcoin for the company. Last up, crypto exchange Wazirx can access its funds again. The exchange notified users that the Indian Enforcement Directorate has unfrozen millions held by that exchange thanks to, quote, active cooperation into an anti-money laundering investigation. Indian officials were probing whether Wazirx was being used to funnel illicit transactions through crypto. The controversy even led Binance CEO Changpeng Zhao to weigh in, saying Binance was deeply concerned about the exchange's operations. All right, for our main story of the day, let's talk about regulation and enforcement here in the US. The SEC is upping its involvement in the crypto space thanks to a new Office of Crypto Assets the agency is launching. That will let the SEC review crypto firms more quickly. And then there's Chair Gary Gensler, who last week doubled down on his view that most cryptocurrencies are securities and therefore already regulated by the SEC. To get more insight into the SEC's latest moves and what they mean for the industry, Crypto World's Mackenzie Segalo spoke to Rusan Boykin of Hashflow. So we have this new Office of Crypto Assets, which will review filings by crypto issuers. What's your take on this new division under the SEC? Yeah, I mean, really, this is just a double down of the chairman on uh, an initiative that he's been pushing for, I'd say, about 12 to 18 months now, where the SEC is really pushing hard to expand its jurisdiction over all digital assets in the United States. Uh, this comes at a very uh, unique time as there are numerous bills being issued right now to decide which regulator will be the ultimate regulator of the digital assets market between the CFTC and the SEC. And the chairman's made no, uh, has been very clear about his desire to be the primary regulator for these assets. And this move is just consistent with that. Because of a lack of firm regulatory guidance in the U.S. in terms of which agency is responsible for crypto, we have, as you mentioned, seen the SEC regulate through enforcement, like the court case it currently has against Ripple. So is this new division and the growth of the SEC's crypto-focused employees overall a sign that the agency is moving beyond regulation by enforcement and simply saying, we're going to regulate this space because we have a mandate regardless of any pen pending bills by Congress? I would actually say no. I think this is a double down into that strategy. I, I, I haven't seen anything from the SEC today where they say they're going to come out with formal guidance as to what tokens do or do not qualify as a security. From what, what I've seen, the chairman believes that guidance is already out there. And you can see through the enforcement actions that the SEC has given that that is the position that they're taking. When I see this, uh, this increase in resources to these divisions within the SEC, that tells me that that's where they're planning to continue until they're, they've been given guidance by Congress to pivot on that strategy. So if the SEC moves full steam ahead in treating most cryptocurrencies as securities, 
What does that mean for these bills in Congress, like the ones by Senators Lummis and Gillibrand? It depends on what those drafts look like, right? I mean, we've seen some of the drafts, but some of them are still in uh, still in negotiations. It depends on what structure Congress ultimately lands on for who will be the uh, primary regulator for these assets. If it's the SEC, as the chairman wants, then then these efforts kind of just would uh, kind of support uh, whatever the final bills are. If the if as we anticipate, or I know a lot of people in the industry hope that there'll be some kind of split between the SEC and the CFTC. Well, then, you know, the, these assets will uh, and these these uh, additional resources will have to pivot to uh, comply with whatever the ultimate regulatory structure is. Now, it's my sense that the CFTC tends to be softer on some of these uh, crypto companies than the SEC. Can you break down uh, how typically we've seen the CFTC and the SEC respond to the digital asset class? That's true. It, it, the industry definitely believes that the CFTC has a better reputation for working uh, cooperative with the industry. And they believe that the way that tokens have kind of developed over the years, that it kind of leans more towards being a commodity rather than, than a security. And that's that's primarily why industry has been focused on pushing for the CFTC to be the primary regulator. The SEC doesn't see it that way, and they, they do have some support for why uh, they have that belief. I mean, some of these securities do act like, I mean, some of these tokens, I'm sorry, do act like securities, for instance, uh, with revenue sharing and voting rights and, and uh, governance rights and and um, uh, some of the, you know, kind of mirrors what equity is. And I think that's the underpinning of what the SEC is kind of uh, jumping on. Uh, I think all of this is a, a really good case for clarity. And uh, I know above all else, industry and market players want to work with regulators as these new acts and, and statutory uh, uh, bills move through Congress so that what we end up with is a, is a middle ground between regulation and a, a place for good innovation. Okay, so focusing in on Chair Gary Gensler for a moment, he's made it clear as recently as last week that while Bitcoin might be a commodity, most other cryptocurrencies are securities. So I'm thinking about Ethereum specifically, which has all the hype around the merge and new development that it will bring. Do you see a world where developers, institutional investors, or even retail investors are perhaps frightened off of the platform by a harsh regulatory stance on ETH? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. If the, if the SEC were to pivot and consider Ethereum to be Ethereum, and I would almost say all the other altcoins in the digital asset industry are securities, that would have a material effect on, uh, on how the market develops and how retail investors can interact with these, with these assets. Because once they're considered to be securities, there's a, a, a very large and robust regime that uh, all these projects would have, to, uh, would have to comply with, which to be totally frank, since most of these are not public companies, they would fall under kind of private companies uh, and the regulations that that control them. And uh, through the uh, credit investor standard, a lot of retail investors would kind of be cut out of this market. So it's extremely material about how these assets are are being uh, uh, designated. If they're commodities, there's a little bit more wiggle room as to how the industry can develop so that it does stay available to consumer uh, and retail investors. If it becomes a security, it'll still be there, but it'll definitely look materially different. And I would purport uh, wouldn't be as tenable uh, to reach those markets. How do you think things are going to play out between the SEC and Ripple? The way the case has been developing uh, to date, uh, it's kind of been little battles going back and forth uh, where each side has won a little bit and, and, and lost a little bit. We haven't really gotten to the substantive questions that make this case interesting. Um, I'm, I will be interested to see once those first uh, opinions come out. Uh, how the judiciary is looking at digital assets like like Ripple. Um, so it's a material case in our industry, and we just ha it hasn't just it hasn't matured enough to really extrapolate where it can go. As the SEC carves out its own regulatory path uh, in the in the absence of hard and fast rules from Capitol Hill, just how retroactive can its rulemaking be? Like how far back uh, is its reach going to extend? Like how far back in time, rather? If the develop the regulatory developments follow what has been done in the past. It would there would probably be some grace period uh, to allow people to time to comply, and then it would probably be most likely a move forward, uh, you know, um, application. I don't think the SEC would look retroactively. That would be uh, novel in my experience. Uh, I think what's probably going to happen is going to be prospective, and there'll probably be a grace period. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow with a whole lot more. We'll see you then.